Back to American Agenda, I'm Heather Childers along with Bob Sellers. You know, we were just watching a live report from Maricopa County in Arizona where the audit there is now entering week three. Let's bring back in our panel. And they've only done a right. third of a million, yeah. a third of a million votes. And, and they've got 2.1 million, right? So they've got a long way to go, Tony. Yeah, uh, they, they do. And what I've never figured out is why is everybody so upset about this? Why are people screaming about this? Why are people writing so negatively about it? If you, somebody wants to go check the ballots, let them go check uh, the ballots. Did Ken sound like a guy who was uh, foaming at the mouth and out of his head? Feel free. Go about uh, checking them. <laughs> there were people who uh, said... Uh, Tony, that let, let me ask you this. If, if, if it were a different uh, race and AOC was in charge... And because that's the way people on the left are looking at this. I don't, and that is one of the things that never moves me a second in my life. <laughs> if they're following a law, if they're able to do these things, what is the issue? What is the argument? Go about checking it. Feel free. Knock yourself out. He, he said himself, this isn't going to change a result. That's his words from that interview you guys just played, right. that exclusive right there. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's certainly what the man said. If you want to check ballots to make sure they're on the up and up, it's fine. It's like when people take a look at the Georgia voting law or some of the other ones. How dare you demand a voter ID? Well, anybody who doesn't believe in voter ID is okay with some level of fraud. Those people should be looked at askew. If you think it's wrong to take a double check or look again and somebody wants to waste their own time, if you will, at looking <laughs> at ballots, that's very odd that you would be so upset about that kind of thing. Very strange indeed. Yeah. Uh, Isabel, what do you think about that? I mean, because everything that I've heard and from the gentleman that we were just interviewing, uh, as Tony said, straight from his mouth, this is not intended to change the outcome of the election. It's just to look and make sure that they don't have any issues moving forward, trying to determine if they had any and trying to actually fix those the next time around. I happen to be sitting in Maricopa County, oh. Arizona, as we speak, and it's so important that these questions are finally answered. There remain several outstanding questions from the last presidential elections, such as people being directed to use Sharpies on their ballots, ballots that mysteriously went missing in the tracking system, and people could not confirm that their vote was counted for either mm -hmm. candidate in the presidential election or the down-ballot races here in Arizona. These are questions that deserve answers for the American people because one of our most sacred rights is the opportunity to participate in this democratic process to elect leaders that represent our values. We're not seeking to somehow completely upheave the results of the presidential election, but we are seeking to understand where the process potentially went wrong and where we can fix it moving forward. I'm so excited that this is happening here in my backyard in Phoenix, Arizona, mm -hmm. and is set to happen at least in Michigan and potentially some other states moving forward as well. Yeah, uh, Bob, I know you and I were kind of uh, looking at each other when they were talking about taking this break, though, <laughs> when, you know, one of the questions has been surrounding security of the entire process. And now yes. they're going to take a break for a week so they can have uh, high school graduation. Didn't he say they were going to leave cameras on them? Yes. I guess you can have somebody monitoring them. Yeah. You know, Tony, I don't get upset over it, but I'm not crazy about this recount because, no, it's not going to change the election outcome. But it could change the perception of the election outcome. And I feel like we've been through the process. I respect the process. Um, I, they, they, and was every uh, vote uh, valid? Probably not. Um, but we've been through the process. And I feel like the state set it up at a certain point. It's like when I was playing baseball, th th there were umps that called that pitch. There were three inches outside. He still called it a strike and I struck out. Uh, so you, you have to put up with that. Um, I'm more concerned, Tony, about... Uh, who's doing it, and I don't think they're being very transparent. Just because you have cameras there doesn't mean you know what, uh, what conversations are going on or what they're looking for and trying to do. And I do get concerned that the outcome could upset people's perception of whether it was a fair election when I'm not are, sure the are, people looking at it are being completely independent. Those are two different conversations, right? I have uh, lots of them in my head, Tony. <laughs> Right. So so you've got the idea of uh, you think that this is not uh, as transparent as you would like it to be. I think that could be a rational conversation that people can have. But perception. We went through three years of Trump colluded with Russia to find that Trump didn't collude but with then Russia. It gets if you were to ask Representative yeah. Eric Swalwell today, Trump still colluded with Russia. So the idea of perception is perception for whom? 
I'm not worried about the perception that a representative Swalwell has. I am always curious to know whether or not we did the right job in being able to tabulate ballots and ensure that people who were lawfully allowed to vote voted. Yeah, but you know, you're absolutely right on the perception question, which plays into why I'm saying I wish it was more of a a bipartisan effort, because whatever comes out of it um, probably isn't going to change anybody's perception, Mm -hmm. which begs the question, why do it? Well, there's not going to be a bipartisan effort because obviously the Democrats don't want to look into this election at all. I mean, so, you know, nothing that this current administration has done so far clear, has been bipartisan. Just to make clear, I'm not a Democrat, OK? So that's a, no, there I'm are other saying, people as well. Yeah, yeah. but the Democrats, Look, and right. I guess there are some other folks as well, I should say, that would not, you know, they don't want this to happen. But there hasn't been any effort at bipartisanship specifically from this administration. So I wouldn't expect them to do that regarding this. Carl? Pro- yeah. Well, well, look, the biggest issue here that we're all missing is not just the examples of fraud or inaccurate reporting of election results. It's the fact that you cannot have a functioning democracy in this country when one out of three American voters don't trust the outcome of the election. It's just it's not possible. And so I think that's where we have to start. Uh, And I would invite my Democrat friends to, to, to recognize that there are a lot of Republican voters out there who don't trust the voting in our country. We cannot have a functioning democracy until we reassure them of integrity. And every time that Democrats push back against an independent audit or decide to boycott something like this, uh, an audit in, in Arizona, or when the media is presented with facts, like we presented last election here in California, one out of 10 households in California got a, an erroneous ballot mailed to their home. For a dead person, for a person who doesn't live there, a duplicate ballot, a triplicate ballot, that's all documented. And until we are putting the politics aside and dealing with voter integrity, election integrity, we're not going to have a functioning democracy. And so my hope is that we return to those issues. And, And it's unassailable. The polling shows in this country one out of three voters, and they tend to be on the right side of the spectrum, do not have trust and confidence in our elections. And that needs to be a bipartisan issue that we address. It cannot be seen from a partisan lens. And uh, uh, shame on the media for dismissing it because we can't move forward as a country until we fix it. All right, fair enough. We're going to uh, take a break. When we come back, uh, vaccines now are being approved for... We're going to talk about vaccines being approved from 12 to 15-year-olds Or we're going to talk about what's going on in Israel. It's like on Jeopardy. It's a potpourri. We'll find out what we're talking about when we come back.